Uh, Tabish is on his way, so I was going to be moved. Now I'm not moved, and I'm back again. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to talk to you about what I think how business networks have changed since uh, since COVID came around. Um, in 1995 um, was the previous time that I went to Pakistan. Um, I went around the world in 1995, uh, 1994, and 95 uh, to write a book. Uh, and I wrote the book with this Mont Blanc pen, um, and I wanted to be a writer, not a typist. Um, I somehow ended up uh, in Amritsar, and at that time it was, um, it was easy uh, on every Friday between 10 a.m. and midday, it was easy to cross the border into Pakistan from India. Uh, so I did that. It was uh, 45 degrees, um, it was very, very hot, and by the time I uh, left Lahore on a bus to get to Islamabad, I realized that I'd lost all my money. I'd lost my wallet somewhere. I didn't know where I'd lost it. I didn't know if it was in, um, if it was in, the, um, if it was in the Golden Temple where I'd been staying, or if I'd lost it through stupidity. But either way, I lost my money. And then I realized that I had no network at all. I had nothing. I didn't have a phone. I didn't have a credit card. Uh, I didn't have any money. There were no social networks at that time. Uh, and the only way that I could get out of trouble, really, was to go to the British Embassy and use that to, to get myself back to London. But it made me think that, as someone who didn't go to university um, and kind of made it up as I went along, uh, I had no old boys network. I had no network at all. Um, and it was difficult to live through life without a network. Um, so I decided to build a network for the first time. The book that I wrote wasn't published. It still isn't published. Um, it's probably uh, uh, going to be published one day, but that's, that's what I hope. Um, so I started to build up a network, and, and it, was, it was a difficult process. Um, I retrained as a journalist uh, about 12 months later, and then I went to every networking event that I could find um, to kind of catch up with all, all of my peers. Uh, I've been traveling for a long time. Uh, and and to, grow that, to grow that network. Now, growing that network in the UK generally means drinking alcohol and going to the pub and usually mixing with quite a few men. You know, there's a lot of... Um, I mean, I have a, a football club on my mask. You know, there's a lot of, um, lot of networking that's based on old male football allegiances um, and everything like that. Um, but I moved away from journalism and I moved into, um, into business and I kept on building those networks. But the, the, the thing that I found that was the most important to do um, was to have a kind network, a network that wasn't based on karma, it wasn't based on uh, doing a favor for somebody and they would do you a favor later because you know, they would be on the rise and you would be on the descent. It was, it was a loose connection of people that had your back and they had your back. Um, and and it, it worked very well. It was actually quite easy. And as a white male from London, you know, life is pretty easy anyway, to be fair, although recent events have changed that. Um, this continued, um, it's continued until 2008. And then I realized that there was going to be a financial crisis. It was obvious. London was slowing down. Um, I went to a conference in Ireland. Um, and, you know, all the building sites were closing down. So there was, you know, there was trouble ahead. So I decided to move. And I decided to move with my wife and five-year-old son um, and go to Goa in India and, uh, and watch the financial crisis from the beach. Uh, we did that for two years. Uh, in the second year, I became a Bollywood uh, film star. I was a Bollywood villain in two movies uh, and had a great time. And, and then I built up my Indian network. I started to, to hang out with Bollywood people and, you know, Dipika Padakoni and I met the Big B and all of these guys I'm sure you know all about. But while I was in India, something else was happening, which I wasn't aware of uh, before. I, I, I joined Facebook and Twitter, but I didn't really see them as anything other than just, you know, something to show off. You know, as a writer, I could show my work uh, and all that. So while I was away and I had some time to read some books and live on the beach, I realized that social networks were going to be a huge thing. And it was now important for me to build up my network uh, as, as someone on social media. So I 
did the work, you know, I, I posted interesting things, I put 20% about myself, 80% about general knowledge, sharing knowledge, um, gradually moved on, I got a blue tick verified from Twitter, which meant um, a great deal. Um, and then I used that, those social networks as part of my business. I'd kind of communicate directly with people that I might do business with um, on Twitter, direct messages, I'd use Facebook. I belatedly started to use LinkedIn, uh, and then I realized that the direct message element of uh, LinkedIn is awesome. You know, it used to be awesome until the bots came along. Um, and all of these things kind of led me in the course of, you know, 15 years to be a good networker. I knew how to network, I knew how to approach people, I used the human touch, I used the conference touch, um, I used the pub touch, and I used the social media touch. And it was all very, very easy. Um, but I was becoming better at creating networks, finding it, you know, not so much an early adopter, but more like a lunchtime adopter, gradually finding, catching up, um, trying to work out how these networks worked. And I got a bit smarter. I started to see things a little bit earlier than people, you know. I, I, was, uh, I started moving into the venture capital world, was a, a venture capital, well, still am a venture capital venture partner at a, a company at 7BC in Silicon Valley. So then I used my network to find entrepreneurs, to find small companies, to find good companies, to find um, startups that investors would be interested in. And that created a VC network. And the, the people that you know, wanted to talk to me, obviously they wanted me to invest in their companies, but it was another form of a network. And then I found out about cryptocurrencies, I found out about Bitcoin, and I think if any of you, ha hands up who, uh, who has an interest in Bitcoin. That's really crazily low compared to the conferences I go to. Um, but you might, you might know or you might not know that Bitcoin is on a, on a bull run at the moment and is kind of approaching $20,000. It's higher from three years ago. So this has worked out quite well for me that I, you know, I'd built up that network early after the, after the, the white paper of, um, of, uh, of, of Bitcoin. So this was all great, you know what I mean? It was just, it was amazing. And then something happened and we know what happened. You know, in March the UK was locked down. A third of my revenues came from speaking at events. That went down. There was unlikely to be. I mean, I'm amazed to be here. Thank you, Pakistan, for inviting me. You know, I didn't expect to do this for at least another 12 months, and I don't think I will be doing that much of it. But that was a, that was a network for me that fell down overnight. I had an amazing speaker network. If I couldn't go to an event, Beza would do it. If Beza couldn't do it, then Sama would do it. If Sama couldn't do it, Sonia would do it. It was an amazing network, but it fell, it fell down overnight. And now all we do is like we, we bicker and talk about when conferences will open and we're almost like a help group to each other as opposed to, <laughs> as opposed to a network. But something else also happened within that process that when a, when a network falls down, you know, another network kind of emerges out of, out, of that, um, out of that detritus. And you feel as if maybe the network has bitten you back. You've been a bit lazy in the way that you've gone to pubs and you've gone to events and you used your masculinity or you used your white privilege. And you think, actually, you know, I should look at myself here. How good was my network? How pure was my network? Was my network actually a bit rotten? Was it a bit full of holes? Was it a little bit easy? Should I have done something better? Was I compliant? Was I lazy? So all of these things I think a lot of us have gone through uh, during, you know, the lockdown in the UK has been pretty severe. We're under our second lockdown at the moment. It's not as bad as the first one. One of the reasons that I came here, you know, the way that you've been dealing with the pandemic here is amazing. And I probably had bet not, best not go into what the UK government is doing or I will lose my network of being invited to the House of Commons and being invited into the House of Lords and being invited to Buckingham Palace, all of which have happened in the last year. So I'd probably best not to bite myself. But what I've done, I think, and many others have done in, a, in, in this kind of demolished world is to, is to build up a better network, a much more resilient network, a, a network that isn't based on easiness or facility, based on actually who was there for me when my world came down in March, who was there? Who came out of the cracks? Who, 
Who, who is now a, a better networker than me? Who's helped me? You know, and I think that it's not only that and realizing that you need to clean up your network or get rid of people in your network because I don't know if you found this, but when you're at home for two months, everybody is on your case because they know you're not traveling, they know you're around, they want to pick your brains for, for, for 10 minutes. Well, you know, picking my brains is expensive, but you seem to think it's free. And it was also the network biting back at me. You know, I couldn't just put people off. You know, I was, you know, I was maybe abusing my network a little bit. But what I've found is that as this new network has come, you know, has come about, is that the people in my network now are brave. They're not weak or privileged or lazy. They're brave because they're the ones that are saying, OK, not only do we have to have better networks, but we have to have better discovery of networks. We need to find each other. Whether I want to find you know, an amazing conversation with Julia last night and a, a fantastic presentation, somebody like that, or somebody in the corner of the room who's of a different culture and a different gender to me, showing me things that I hadn't seen before. It's improving me as a person. And a network is improving me as, 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 I, as I go about. And I was a little bit weak when the network fell apart. I felt, you know, I needed to survive for six months. You know, I needed to just get some money for six months and I'd be okay. And I did do that, you know, finally and all that stuff. But one of the things that's come across with conversations with people in the care sector, government ministers, all types of strange people, is that we need to be braver. And in the Spanish Civil War um, in the 30s, there was a female uh, symbol of resistance, and her name was called La Pasionara. And what La Pasionara said, she said that it's better to die on your feet than live on your knees. And I personally maybe had been living on my knees for a few, for, 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 for some time, and then I was actually laying on the floor, um, still alive, when, when, when COVID came along. But since that moment, and since I've improved, and I think other people have improved under this COVID, and the kind of the optimism that we can find each other and do things together and have a better and a more refined network. And we need, a, we need networks. I mean, the networks around here, the networks that I saw during the, during the breaks, are they're strong and they're resilient. And we need that resilience and we need that strength because the world's in a pretty bad place. And we've been warned by this pandemic, if we don't sort ourselves out, then we may be extinct. So all I'm saying is now, don't live on your knees. Stand up, go down fighting. Today is the start of the new network. Thank you very much.